So um, I'm Josh Simon from the office of the CTO at VMware, and uh, I work on uh, high performance computing. My background is all HPC, about uh, 20 plus years, uh, some at Sun Microsystems, and uh, I also worked at uh, Thinking Machines, a supercomputing manufacturer in the uh, Boston area. So today, what I'd like to do is share some initial results with you uh, using FDR InfiniBand and also Rocky uh, with the SX 5.5 Update 1. Uh, these are results that we haven't published yet. We're working on putting together a technical white paper, and I hope you uh, find this interesting. Okay, so first off, what do I mean by HPC? I don't. I do not mean just applications that run fast. I mean applications that are typically scientific, uh, research, or engineering in nature. You can see here some things like uh, atmospheric, uh, earth, and environmental sciences, biosciences, oil exploration, etc. So, uh, highly technical applications are often parallel. Uh, and to take advantage of uh, interconnects like uh, Mellanox and Okay, so um, before I get into the details of the performance, let me um, talk to you just very briefly about what a deployment of a VMware solution would look like for an HPC environment. So the idea, we're, we're talking about a private cloud here, but we, the idea basically is that you wrap your bare metal resources in a VCAC based private cloud, and you give the ability to uh, end scientists or engineers to uh, basically, through a self-provisioning portal, launch virtual HPC clusters uh, within that environment. Uh, the environment can then offer multiple clusters simultaneously to different research communities and then load balance them onto the infrastructure uh, using DRS, for example, for policy-based resource management. Within each of those clusters, you would be running Grid Engine or LSF or what you would normally run uh, for your HPC cluster. And that, in a, in, a, in a nutshell, is what we're talking about in terms of the solution. Okay, so um, from a workload perspective, you can broadly uh, think of uh, HPC workloads as falling into two different classes. Uh, all of them map onto some kind of a, a grid or some kind of a large HPC cluster infrastructure. The first one is a throughput workload. Uh, that would be things like uh, movie rendering or uh, BLAST in life sciences or uh, Monte Carlo simulations, which are used in financial services. They have no interconnect requirements, and we're not really going to talk about those here. Uh, other than to say that, generally speaking, we're finding in the tests that we're doing that those applications run with maybe a couple of percent performance degradation at most, and sometimes they run faster in a virtual environment than they, than they do in a bare metal environment. And I can explain why if we had more time or talk to me afterwards, but they run very, very well. So the question is, if you look at the MPI applications, the applications that typically use Finiband or other high-speed interconnects, how do they run in a virtualized environment? So what we've been doing, uh, I'll give you an example, uh, is this summer uh, we've been testing on a small four-node cluster, HP cluster, you can see the specs there. Uh, we're using uh, Mellanox FDR and Finiband. We've been doing both uh, FDR 56 gigabit per second IP testing and also Rocky testing 40 gigabit per second Rocky uh, using a 12-port uh, FDR switch. And what you see here are the, the um, ping-pong latencies, half round trip latencies, which is what we measure in HPC typically. And what you can see is that for the smallest message sizes, which is shown here, uh, about a 0.2 microsecond overhead uh, for the smallest message sizes uh, in doing these transfers. So as you go to larger message sizes, the disparity disappears. So uh, the question there is, if you're seeing, it's roughly a 15% overhead for those very small messages. The question is, if you have a, a, uh, an overhead of 15%, does that automatically mean that you're also going to see a 15% overhead in your application performance? And I'll talk about that in a minute. But one other thing I want to mention here uh, that's important, you can see that there are actually, it's maybe difficult to see, but there are three different curves shown on here. Uh, there is native, which is the lower dark blue line, and then there are two lines that are on top of each other. That's ESX55 update one, and then also ESX5.5 uh, update one, running uh, with SRIOV. That's not yet available. That's something that we're running in test mode in our uh, research cluster. Uh, we have early bits for Mellanox. And the point here is that we're seeing very good performance with that. And the reason that that's an interesting thing to talk about is that by having SRIOV, it's possible for us to take a single InfiniBand card and carve it up into logical pieces and give one of those logical devices to each VM that's running on a system. So it's no longer the case that you have to share, you have to give that entire card to one uh, uh, virtual machine using VMDirect.io. So that, that's a 
big deal. And that enables things like IP connected storage capabilities, which are really important at HPC. Okay, so this is what it looks like for, um, for read latency for InfiniBand. Uh, if you look at Rocky, the results are very, very similar. Uh, the overheads are, are almost identical. So um, in, 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 because that's true, I'm just going to show you some additional numbers for, uh, for InfiniBand and not for Rocky because we expect the results to be pretty similar. So the HPC Challenge benchmark is a very common benchmark that's run in HPC. Um, and you can see uh, across the board here, we're showing you five different um, configurations. These are all running on the four-node cluster and running a variety uh, of a changing number of MPI processes uh, from four up to 32 in this particular case. And what you're seeing is uh, ratios are virtual to native. So closer to 1.0 means that we're getting better performance. If it's below 1.0, that means that we have a performance issue on the virtual platform. And you can see uh, mostly across the board that we're doing quite well in terms of delivering high performance uh, for this application. The, the, um, the outlier there is star random access. Uh, that is something that we are continuing to look at. Um, we have an idea of what the issues are there. Um, but generally speaking, we're getting quite good performance with the HPCC benchmarks. Um, we went a little higher level and um, in the life sciences looked at uh, the NAMD molecular dynamics code with um, InfiniBand. And here we're seeing quite good results uh, across the board. And the reason for this, if you think back to the latency uh, chart that I showed you before, is that NAMD, like many real applications, actually does not use those very, very low message sizes. And so it does not really suffer any degradation in the virtualized environment. Uh, similar LAMPS is another molecular dynamics code uh, that we've tested. And again, you can see a little bit of a dip for the, um, for the 64 process uh, jobs, but Again, the performance is very close to native for these. And so the takeaway here is that even though there is a, uh, a couple of takeaways, we're seeing, uh, we did earlier tests based on QDR, uh, the earlier generation of InfiniBand about two years ago. Uh, these new FDR tests show lower performance overheads. Uh, that's point number one. Point number two is that the even though there are latency overheads at the very lowest message sizes, that does not necessarily translate into performance degradations for real HPC applications. Now, don't get me wrong, there are applications out there that will experience performance degradations because they do require those lowest latencies. But there are a fair number of applications out there that we can do quite well on. In addition to all the throughput applications that I mentioned earlier, all went very, very well. So, um, if you want to learn more, we have actually uh, an HPC booth at the um, CTO, um, sorry, the office of the CTO Expo booth, which is behind the, the main VMware booth. And we're giving a talk on Thursday in Moscone West, uh, all about this. So it's a, an hour long.